produced. Now, tritium should not be produced under these conditions, so this is very unusual. Other uh, uh, elements are produced that were not present in the apparatus initially, and these frequently have abnormal isotopic ratios. Finally, various consistent patterns of behavior are found. That is, when conditions are changed, the same behavior is seen as a result, no matter who runs the experiment or makes the observation. And finally, energetic particle and gamma emission is seen if the, the, these are, tri are detected, efforts are made to detect these within the apparatus. They're not seen outside the apparatus. I don't have time to go into that uh, evidence in detail, but nevertheless, uh, the energetic particles and emissions are seen. Cold fusion can be initiated a number of different ways. The most thoroughly studied and the one that Pons and Fleischmann used initially was electrolysis. Electrolysis consists of passing a current through heavy water containing a little bit of lithium salt. This decomposes at the cathode, which is a palladium, and eventually a nuclear reaction occurs at the cathode material. A different uh, technique has been discovered recently where the active, the nuclear active material is simply exposed to deuterium gas at sufficient pressure and with a little applied heat sometimes. Just simply exposing the nuclear active material to the gas generates heat and nuclear products and we'll talk about that in more detail. A liquid plasma can be formed within the electrolyte in an electrolytic cell simply by applying a high enough uh, voltage to the cell. Uh, the, a voltage in excess of 100 volts is usually required to generate uh, and break down the uh, liquid into a plasma. This applies a lot of energy and high temperature to the environment and results in a more rapid nuclear reaction at the uh, cathode, which frequently is uh, tungsten. A gas plasma can be formed between two electrodes. If this plasma is formed in deuterium and uh, the electrodes, it turns out, can be many different things, but nevertheless, a nuclear reaction is found to occur at the cathode surface. Proton, proton conductors are complex oxides that can dissolve uh, deuterons or protons and when a voltage is placed across them and they're heated, the protons or deuteron are caused to move and in the process heat and nuclear products are, are formed. Sonic implantation involves applying an ultrasonic uh, frequency to a liquid, usually uh, heavy water, and this causes the bubbles that are formed to collapse on, on a metal surface. And when this happens, the contents of the bubble, as they collapse, are injected into the metal. Gradually, the concentration of deuterium and oxygen build up in that metal surface, and a nuclear reaction is initiated. This is different than sonofusion, which is an attempt to create hot fusion within the bubble itself as it collapses. And finally, if laser light is applied to a material at high enough intensity, uh, various nuclear reactions can be made to occur.